turning our attention now in module 6.2 to logarithmic equations. So this time we're looking at equations that involve logarithms and we're trying to uh, somehow cancel out the logarithms and solve for x here. Let's see how that works in questions 7 and 8 in our module 6.2 class notes. Here, question number seven, we've got six plus the natural log of x equals 10. Let me split the page so I can show my work for question number seven clearly. And let's, let's try to solve for x. Let's try to get x by itself. Subtracting six on both sides. Subtract six from 10 and we've got the natural log of x equals four. Now the question is how am I gonna get that x out of the logarithm so that I can solve for x and get x by itself. And the answer is actually the same as uh, the approach that we took with examples five and six in the last video. The definition of a logarithm. The definition of a logarithm says that if I've got a logarithm of a number equals a power, then I can rewrite that as the base to the power is equal to that number. Let me color this up as I've done before. Let's take these three pieces, log base e, the natural logarithm, of the result x equals the power 4. And then I've got my result x is equal to the base e to the power four. Oh, and look, I, I just solved for x. x equals e to the fourth power. Wow, we're done. All right, so using that definition of a logarithm, uh, yeah, we're good. Let's move on. Let's take a look and see that if that same uh, strategy works for question number eight. Spoiler alert, it does. Question number eight, two times the natural log of x plus one equals 10. Let's try to work on this and get x by itself. The first thing I would do is isolate the logarithm, divide both sides by two. Divide both sides by two and you've got the natural log of x plus one equals five. Now I've got a logarithm equal to a number. I'm, I'm not going to do all the colors this time. It's the logarithm base e of x plus 1 equals 5. Shift that around, rearrange that into exponential form, and we've got e to the fifth power equals x plus 1. Almost have x by itself, subtract 1 on both sides, and you've got x equals e to the fifth minus 1. Nice. That works too. Oh, look, I found a bonus example. That was too easy. Let's work a harder one. This is not one that's on your, um, your module 6.2 class notes, but don't skip it. This gives an important example, extending the ideas that we talked about in seven and eight here, uh, and will be very helpful <clears throat> on your homework and on your exam uh, coming up with this material. So let's take a look at this quote unquote bonus question, log base four of x plus log base four of x plus six equals two. Now we've got kind of the same situation here, uh, a logarithm equal to a number but it's not quite, it's two logarithms equal to an, it's the sum of two logarithms equal to a number. And you remember the sum of two logarithms, our product rule can be rewritten as a product. Log base four of the product X times X plus six equals two. So sometimes we need those log rules, those properties of logarithms to work through our logarithmic equations like this. 
That's the first point. Now we've got uh, a single logarithm equal to a number, and we can use the definition of the logarithm to say log base 4 of x times x plus 6 equals 2. Translate that into the base 4 to the power 2 equals x times x plus 6. Now we have no more logarithm and we can work through to find our answer here. There's a little bit more work to do. We need to distribute combine like terms. Let's see where we're at here. 4 squared is 16, of course. And then distribute that x on the left hand side to get x squared plus 6x. And you should be familiar enough with these types of equations to realize uh, it's a quadratic. I need to set it equal to zero and factor. That's exactly what we're going to do. Subtract 16 on both sides to set it equal to zero. Now factor x squared plus 6x minus 16 to x plus 8 times x minus 2. And finally, set each one of those factors equal to zero and you should recognize your results of x equals negative 8 or 2. So we've got two answers here. And so, so that, that, that was a pretty good bonus problem. Uh, that was a good example, uh, but it's not over yet. We've got these solutions that we found. If you're looking at the work we've done and the work I've shown carefully, you'll notice that I haven't boxed any of my answers. Let me make a little room here and say these are the answers that we found for these three questions. Let's check our answers and see if they actually work. And that's an important point here. Uh, for logarithms in particular, for logarithmic equations, you must check your answers. And we're about to find out why. Let's stick with the bonus problem for now. And let's try. Let's try our answers of negative 8 and positive 2. Let's start with negative 8. Let's plug negative 8 in for x and see if it works. Let's check. Log base 4 of negative 8 plus log base 4 of negative 8 plus 6. And we need to see, is that equal to 2? And immediately, if you recall your properties of logarithms, uh, not, not the product rule and all those, but your basic properties of logarithms that we talked about in section 5, module 5.2, we can't take the log of a negative number. So immediately I see log base 4 of negative 8. Well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Negative 8 is out. Negative 8 is not a solution. It worked out as a solution when we were, when we were doing the work because we got it after we eliminated the logarithms. And so we couldn't immediately tell that it wasn't going to work. That's why we have to go back and check. We have to go back to the logarithms and plug in our potential solutions and check to see if they work. Remembering that we can't take the log of a negative number and we can't take the log of zero. There are domain restrictions on logarithmic functions. You can only take the log of a positive number. So when you solve an equation that involves logarithms, you have to go back and check those answers to make sure that you don't get any negatives inside a logarithm, that you're not trying to take the log of a negative number or to take the log of zero. That doesn't work. So here we see x equals negative 8. That doesn't work. Let's try x equals positive 2. Let's plug 2 in for x. Log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 2 plus 6. We're trying to see, does that equal 2? Uh, let's, I don't see any negatives, which is, which is very hopeful situation here. Um, very, very, very positive start to, sorry, um, here. 
let's work out what we've got. Uh, starting with uh, that second logarithm, 2 plus 6 is 8. So I've got log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 8. Adding two logarithms, I can combine that into a single logarithm and multiply. Log base 4 of 2 times 8. 2 times 8, of course, is 16. Log base 4 of 16 is equal to 2. Yes, because base 4 to the power 2 gives me 16. That is true. That works. So that checks out. Good. So we have our solution x equals 2, but x equals negative 8, not a solution. Let's check our other solutions way back in question 7 here. We got x equals e to the fourth. Let's plug that in for x and see 6 plus the natural log of e to the fourth equals 10. Well, the natural log and the base e exponential are inverses. They cancel each other out, and that just leaves me with 4. So 6 plus 4 equals 10. Well, sure it does. Yeah, we're good. That works. And in question number 8, we've got e to the 5th minus 1. Let's plug that in and see if it works. We've got 2 times the natural log of, in place of x, e to the 5th minus 1 plus 1 equals 10. The minus 1 from our solution and the plus 1 from our logarithm, they cancel. And I've just got 2 times the natural log of e to the 5th equals 10. And then the natural log and the exponential base e are inverses. They cancel. So that just is 2 times 5 equals 10. And sure, 2 times 5 equals 10. That works. All right, so we're okay. All of our other solutions check out. It was just that x equals negative 8 here that didn't work. Finally then, wrapping everything up, though that's all of our check work that we needed to show. Coming back around, back to our work, our actual work of, of solving the equations. Let's just now uh, write our box answers. Starting with the solution uh, of x equals 2 here for, uh, for, for our bonus problem. And since x equals negative 8 didn't work, we call that an extraneous answer. An extraneous answer is one that came up as a solution, but then when we checked it, it didn't check out. So there, all and in fact, all of our uh, logarithm equations are going to have, are going to ask for what are your working solutions and what are your extraneous answers. Like in question number seven here, we got a working solution of x equals e to the fourth, and that was it. We didn't have any extraneous answers. Fine. We've got a solution of x equals e to the fourth and none for extraneous. Similarly, in question eight, we've got a working answer of x equals e to the fifth minus one and no extraneous solutions.